Prior to Mendel's work, there were many theories to explain heredity. One of them was, the blending theory of inheritance. According to this theory, parental traits get mixed and, modified in the offspring. The offspring produced have an intermediate trait. For example, if a tall pea plant and, dwarf pea plant are crossed, then the offspring should be neither tall nor dwarf but, of intermediate stem length. Mendel's experiments proved that, this theory of blending inheritance was not correct. Let's understand how. Recall that, Mendel's experiments involved seven P characters, each having two visually distinguishable traits. We also understood the term pure line or true breeding. Recall that, plant varieties that pass traits without change, from one generation to next are known as true breeding or pure lines. For example, on self-fertilization, plants with purple flowers produced offspring with purple flowers and plant with white flowers always produced offspring with white flowers. First set of experiments conducted by Mendel involved cross-fertilization of pure lines that differed in just one character. Such a cross is known as monohybrid cross. Mono means single. It refers to the single character of pea plant. The two plants involved in this cross have different traits for this character. And hybrid refers to the offspring of this cross. For our illustration, we will take the character, stem length or plant height of the garden pea plant. The two traits for this character are tall and dwarf. Let's say, Mendel took pollen from the tall plant and, manually transferred it to the stigma of the flower on a dwarf plant. This means, the tall plant is the male, and, dwarf plant is female. So, this is our pea generation. After cross-fertilization, Mendel observed the results. All the F1 generation produced, consisted of tall plants. What he noted was that, the two traits of P generation did not blend together to form an intermediate result. Instead, all plants of F1 generation were tall. None of the plants in F1 generation was dwarf. Dwarf trait appeared to be vanished completely. What really happened to the dwarf trait? To find this, Mendel allowed F1 plants to self-fertilize. Recall that, the progeny produced by self-fertilization of F1 generation is designated as F2 generation. After self-fertilization of tall plants of F1 generation, the plants produced in F2 generation, consisted of tall, as well as dwarf plants. So, dwarf trait reappeared in F2 generation. Thus, Mendel observed two things. First, the F1 offspring were not a blend of the two traits of the parents. Only one of the two traits were present in the offspring. For example, all plants were tall. Second, the other trait did not disappear or vanished. It appeared in the F2 generation. For example, dwarf plant appeared in F2 generation. Mendel also analyzed and noted that, total 1053 plants were produced in F2 generation. Out of these, 787 were tall, and 266 were dwarf. When he calculated the ratio of tall to dwarf plants, it came out to nearly 3 to 1. Mendel performed monohybrid crosses for all the 7P characters. And, all seven crosses between varieties with contrasting traits gave the same results. Mendel gave the term, dominant, to the trait that appeared in the F1 generation and was more abundant in F2 generation. So, in our example tall trait is dominant. Tall trait appeared to dominate over dwarf trait in F1 generation. It somehow masked the other dwarf trait and it was also more abundant in F2 generation. He gave the term, recessive, 
to the trait that remains hidden in F1 generation and was less abundant in F2 generation. In our example, the dwarf trait is the recessive trait. Dwarf trait remains hidden in the F1 generation and was less abundant in F2 generation. Mendel determined the dominant and recessive trait in each of the seven P characters. Tall stem length, axial flower position, purple flower color, green pod color, inflated pod shape, yellow seed color and round seed shape, all are the dominant traits. And, the other trait of each character is the recessive one. Mendel didn't stop here. He did another set of experiments to find out if, it mattered whether the male or female parent had a particular trait. In this set of experiments, Mendel once again performed a mono-hybrid cross between two pure lines. But there was a difference. This time, Mendel took pollen from the dwarf plant and, transferred it to the stigma of the tall plant. This means, now the dwarf plant is male and, the tall plant is female. Recall that, in the previous cross, the tall plant was the male and, the dwarf plant was the female. This type of cross, in which male and, female parents in the P generation are reversed, is known as, reciprocal cross. We can also say, that in a reciprocal cross, we reverse the traits of the male and female parents. So, what were the results of this reciprocal cross? The results were same. All the F1 progeny consisted of tall plants. And, all tall plants were more abundant in the F2 generation relative to the dwarf plants. The ratio of F2 generation was also same, that is 3 to 1. On the basis of these experiments, Mendel concluded that, it does not matter, whether the trait for stem length of the pea plant, comes from the male or female parent. Both the parents contributed equally to inheritance. In the next video lecture, we will discuss, the hypothesis proposed by Mendel on the basis of these experiments. We will also learn the law of segregation. Thank you for watching.